Back to our breaking news, a letter from the Justice Department which says it was sent at Robert Mueller's request reminding him not to go beyond the boundaries of his public report when he testifies on Wednesday. Former special counsel is going to have to navigate claims of executive privilege versus those of congressional oversight. 360's Randy Kay spent hours sifting through video of his previous testimony for insight into exactly what kind of witness Democrats and Republicans can expect. The cyber threat has evolved significantly over the past decade. When Robert Mueller testifies, he's laser focused, never saying more than he has to, never claiming to know more than he does. Do you have any idea about the percentage of members of, let's say, MS-13, because that's in the news lately, might be here illegally? I do not. I have to get back to you, but uh, it's uh, fairly substantial. Well, I, I really have to get back to you on that. Mueller has had to face questioning from congressional committees as far back as July 2001. At his FBI director nomination hearing, he showed a rare moment of lightheartedness when asked about FBI managers being required to take polygraph tests. I have already taken that polygraph. The only reason I asked that question is I knew you had, and I just think it's important. <laughs> it's important for people to. Yeah, how did you do? <laughs> I'm sitting here. That's all I can I'm say. I'm sorry. <laughs> we just hope you had a good examiner. That's all. <laughs> Mueller's testified dozens of times over the years. It's all preserved and cataloged online by C-SPAN. We reviewed more than 10 hours of it. While he is most often precise and polite, he does not like to be pushed around. That was evident in 2013 when Mueller testified about the Boston Marathon bombings. Why did no one go to the mosque and say, who are these guys? They attend, may attend here. Why, why was that not done since such a thorough job was done? Nor does he like to be interrupted. Uh, your facts are not altogether uh, well. All right, point out specifically. May I finish my, uh, my Point out specifically. I... Sir, if you're going to call me a liar, you need to point out specifically where any facts are wrong. Uh, we went to the mosque prior Before... to Boston. Prior to Boston. Prior to Boston happening, we were in that mosque talking to imams several months beforehand as part of our outreach efforts. So were you aware that those mosques were started by Alamudi? I've answered the question, sir. Even when things get heated, though, he never raises his voice. It's standard Mueller, calm and cool. You're asking questions about details of the investigation. I'd be happy to take that. That is not a detail about the investigation. That took place prior to the investigation starting. Please, may I please finish? You're asking detailed questions about the investigation. I'd be happy to get back to you and answer those questions that I can. In 2007, Mueller was pressed about a conversation he'd had with former Attorney General John Ashcroft. The topic? A controversial wiretapping program run by the National Security Agency. Mueller, as always, stood his ground, protecting private conversations. I'm asking you to tell us what the conversation was. Uh, I don't think there's a privilege. And I don't want a conversation. I want what's in your psyche. What's in your, did you consider it yourself? That's not a conversation. That's a state of mind. Well, to the extent that I follow through on the state of mind, then it is a conversation. I, I, I again, I would resist getting into that conversation. Despite his rigidness, Mueller has also shown humility, like during this 2013 exchange about surveillance and smartphones, where he admitted he hadn't prepared properly for the questioning. It's terribly disappointing to, to come to this point, talk about something that is in the headlines of every newscast. I gave the questions in advance. And they noted that I would be asked on that, I might add. So it's my fault. Humility from a man now just hours away from what he hopes will be his last hearing on Capitol Hill. Randy Kay, CNN, New York. A lot of experience joining me now to discuss Robert Mueller's career and his previous relationship with Congress, someone who worked directly under him at the FBI, John Pistol, who served as deputy director. John, do you expect the Mueller that we see on Wednesday will be any different than the Mueller we just saw in Randy's piece? Very serious, very prepared witness generally who's not afraid to push back on lawmakers? No, I think that's right, Anderson. I think that uh, the piece that Randy teed up will be uh, an example. Those are examples of what he will be testifying like, where he'll be factual, he'll be responsive to the questions, perhaps succinct in those responses, and some may even find that to be terse in terms of short to the, to the point uh, responses. Uh, but I think he will try to also refer back to the written report as much as possible so he doesn't elaborate on that with his opinion or recommendations or things that beyond the scope of the report. Do you see him actually ending up kind of reading from the report itself? I, I could see him doing that if 
if members ask him questions that are directly answered in the report, I could see him saying, well, I've addressed that. The, the special counsel's team has addressed that in the report. And if he is pressed uh, too much, he may even say, for example, uh, on page 67, you'll find the specific answer to that. And then he may pull that out and read it, uh, perhaps just to uh, delay that uh, or extend the timing of his answer. So limiting other questions and things like that. So w we'll see about that. I mean, it seems like uh, so many of the Democrats on, on the committee would be fine if he is just reading from the report. It seems like what they want is, you know, Robert Mueller on television, even if it's him reading, they feel people will learn something that they didn't otherwise know because most of them, most people have not read the report. Well, that's right. I think uh, I saw something over the weekend said that of those surveyed, perhaps only two to three percent of people have actually read the entire report, which is understandable. I mean, it is, it is somewhat dense in places. And if you don't have a legal background or an investigative background, I can see how people get could get bogged down. But I think the key would be if Democrats were focusing on what are the big takeaways from volume one and then from volume two and then in the totality, what are the conclusions? And even if they had him read some of the conclusions that are in the report, that would probably be the first time many people, if not most people, have, have heard that specific language. Mm. John Pistol, I appreciate you being with us, John. Thank you very much. Mm. You bet.